Quentin Tarantino's final movie, The Movie Critic, is still in its pre-production phase and was originally looking to start shooting in September 2023. However, due to the writers' and actors' strikes, production has yet to begin. Earlier in 2023, Tarantino reaffirmed that his 10th movie would be his last, but he was also working on a miniseries which he was hoping to work on in 2023. Because of this, many were led to believe that his final movie was still a few years away. However, just a mere few weeks after revealing his intent to work on a miniseries, it was revealed that Tarantino had finished writing the screenplay for his final movie. It would be called The Movie Critic. With the writer's strike seemingly having come to an end, and hopefully the actor's strike concluding in the not-too-distant future, I wanted to share everything we know so far about Tarantino's tenth and final movie. Whilst most of this is just rumour and speculation, I am sure that some of the information in this video will turn out to be accurate. The movie critic is set to follow a character based on a real-life movie critic for a pornographic magazine which Tarantino used to read in the 1970s. The director said that this character is based on a guy who really lived but was never famous. On the inspiration for this character, Tarantino said, All the other stuff was too shaky to read, but then there was this porno rag that had a really interesting movie page. He wrote about mainstream movies and he was a second string critic. I think he was a very good critic. He was as cynical as hell. His reviews were a cross between early Howard Stern and what Travis Bickle might be if he were a film critic. Think about Travis's diary entries. The porno rag critic was very, very funny. He was very rude, you know. He cursed, he used racial slurs, but his shit was really funny. He was as rude as hell. He wrote like he was 55, but he was only in his mid-30s. He died in his late 30s. It wasn't clear for a while, but now I've done some research and I think it was complications due to alcoholism. When this film was first announced, it was speculated to be following a female lead based on the real-life movie critic Pauline Kael, someone who Tarantino really admires, though this turned out to be false. However, this doesn't mean a character inspired by Kale won't feature in the movie. Maybe there is room for a supporting character based on Kale appearing in the film. Having a character based on an esteemed critic like Pauline Kale would certainly juxtapose a critic who writes for a porno magazine. Tarantino has revealed since the announcement of the movie critic that his film would feature a male lead and the director was looking for an American actor in his mid-30s for the role. Nothing has been confirmed as of yet, but it has been reported that Paul Walter Hauser has been cast in the lead role of the movie critic. The reason nothing official has been announced is due to the sag after strikes, which have been taking place now for the last couple of months. During the strike, members of SAG are not allowed to announce, star in or promote the movies they are working on. It is believed that Paul Walter Hauser has signed the contract to star as the lead in the movie, but as no announcement was made before the strikes began, he can't be announced in this lead role. With the Writers Guild of America strike having made a tentative deal with the Hollywood studios, there is room for sag Astra demands to follow in the next couple of weeks. If that is the case, then an announcement of the movie critic should be happening shortly after the strikes end, and production could start on the movie as soon as the strikes have ended, especially if all other aspects of pre-production have been completed. Tarantino has collaborated several times with certain actors across his filmography, notably actors like Samuel L. Jackson, Uma Thurman, Tim Roth, Michael Madsen and Harvey Keitel have featured in several of Tarantino's movies. And I have no doubt that Tarantino will have some of his frequent collaborators appear in his final film. It has been reported that Samuel L. Jackson has already signed on for a role, which isn't surprising at all. This is despite the actor not appearing in Tarantino's last movie, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Samuel L. Jackson has appeared in six of Tarantino's movies. There are also reports that John Travolta, who has only worked with Tarantino once before in Pulp Fiction back in 1994, will have a role in the movie as well. 
As with the casting of Paul Walter Hauser, nothing has been announced yet because of the SAG AFTRA strike, but casting announcements could be made as soon as SAG is able to negotiate a deal with the Hollywood film studios. Tarantino being such an iconic director and an auteur would mean many actors would be keen to work with him on his final project. I could even see the likes of Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio returning in small roles for the movie, even in supporting roles to Paul Walter Hauser's character. When it was announced that the lead would be an actor in their mid-thirties, people had still hoped Leonardo DiCaprio could play the role. However, that time has passed. Leonardo DiCaprio's grown up now, and I don't think he could convincingly play a 35-year-old on film anymore. Paul Schrader, who may be best known for writing the screenplay for Taxi Driver, as well as being a director in his own right, has said Tarantino asked him about Rolling Thunder, a movie that Schrader wrote. Schrader said Tarantino was working on something to do with filmmaking in the 70s, and part of this, he's going to use clips from movies from the 70s, but he's also going to remake movies from the 70s, and he asked me, can I redo the ending of Rolling Thunder? And I said, yeah, go for it. I'd love to see you redo the ending of Rolling Thunder. Who knows whether he'll actually will or not. But it was something that was tickling his imagination in a very Tarantino-esque way. Similar to how Once Upon a Time in Hollywood inserted Leonardo DiCaprio's Rick Dalton in The Great Escape, maybe something like this could happen with some of the iconic films of the 1970s being the backdrop. As Tarantino is such a huge fan of cinema, redoing scenes from some of his favourite movies could be a way to pay homage to these films. Or this could be completely wrong. Maybe the use of Rolling Thunder footage was unrelated to the movie critic. We'll have to wait and see. The movie critic may also be the final movie of actor Bruce Willis. Back in 2022, Bruce Willis had announced that he was retiring from acting after a diagnosis of aphasia, a language disorder that affects the way you can communicate. It was also later revealed that the actor had been diagnosed with dementia. Now this is only a rumour, and Tarantino may or may not have approached Bruce Willis and his family yet, but he wants to allegedly offer Bruce Willis a role in the final film of his filmography as a send-off to the actor. Willis's last few movies have been straight to video and have generally been very, very poorly reviewed. After his aphasia diagnosis, the Golden Raspberry Awards, also known as the Razzies, rescinded their most recent nomination for Willis. The Razzies said the following, After much thought and consideration, the Razzies have made a decision to rescind the Razzie Award given to Bruce Willis due to his recently disclosed diagnosis. If someone's medical condition is a factor in their decision making and or their performance, we acknowledge that it is not appropriate to give them a Razzie. If Willis is approached by Tarantino, his final movie will not be one straight to video and the actor will be able to end his career on a high note. There's some acknowledgement that Willis may be too sick to perform in any role no matter how small, but there is a chance that Tarantino will use CGI or archive footage to allow Bruce Willis to appear in the film. This is simply just a rumour, and some may even consider approaching Willis for a role now as inappropriate. However, if this is true, I think it would be a fitting way to help secure the legacy of Bruce Willis's career after a period of flops from the last decade. The movie critic will be shot in Los Angeles. Fittingly, Tarantino said, I love shooting in California. I started directing movies here, and it is only fitting that I shoot my final motion picture in the cinema capital of the world. There's nothing like shooting in my hometown. The crews are the best I've ever worked with, and the locations are amazing. The film is also set to receive a $20 million tax credit for shooting in California. Whilst it is a shame that this will be Tarantino's final movie, I think many people can respect the decision for a director to step away to either bring the spotlight on the new talent in Hollywood and to avoid the curse of being an old filmmaker, which Tarantino wants to avoid. What are your thoughts on Tarantino directing his final movie? Which of Tarantino's common collaborators do you think will appear in the film? Let me know in the comments below. Please make sure you give this video a like. Subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon if you want to stay up to date with all of my videos. That's it for now, thanks for tuning in.